Okay, here's my tutorial for building a foam latex oven from scratch for under $600. You can build it for less, but I have a tendency to go overboard, so I spent a little more because I don't want to have to build another one of these things anytime soon. I built this one over the course of a weekend. So, here's what you're going to need to build this thing. I take notes because I didn't create graphics for everything. 2 by 4 is to give you two pieces 32 and a quarter long, two at 36 inches, and two at 17 inches. 2 by 2s to give you four pieces that are 47 and a quarter inches long, four that are 32 and a quarter long, and six that are 20 and a quarter long. Uh, 2 by 4 plywood or particle board sheets that are 3 eighths of an inch or half an inch thick. They'll need to be cut. Foil back foam insulation sheets. I went with one inch because they're easier to cut. Foil tape miscellaneous hardware like hinges, barrel bolts, handles and door pulls, casters, screws, angled framing anchors, a heating element, a high temp blower or fan, various power tools like a circular saw, drill, chop saw, a jigsaw, a thermostat, and one inch angled aluminum bars for your oven rack. I'm no carpenter but I love to build stuff so remember safety first. Wear eye protection, and be sure to measure twice and cut once. Just be careful. Fingers do not grow back. Now the external dimensions of this oven are going to be four feet tall by three feet wide and two feet deep. And the first thing I'm going to do is build the base of the oven using a two by three piece of plywood supported by two by four frame underneath using two 36 inch pieces and the two 17 inch pieces I mentioned. They're held together with drywall screws and angled framing anchors. Apologies for the lens blur. Somehow some schmutz got on the lens and I didn't notice until after I finished the oven. Mr. Observant, right? Hope it's not too distracting. But then it could have been worse. Now the next step was for me to cut the two by twos into the lengths I needed for this. That's four at 47 and a quarter, six at 20 and a quarter, and four at 32 and a quarter. Now if you're following along and doing the math in your head, you already know that these numbers don't add up right. That's because two by twos aren't really two by two. They're actually 1 and 7 sixteenths by 1 and 7 sixteenths, or, you know, 1 and a half by 1 and a half. Go figure. Uh, 2 by 4s are not actually 2 by 4 either. They're closer to 1 and a half by 3 and a half. Plus, I needed to leave a little room for the exterior plywood skin of the oven that's going to be 3 eighths of an inch thick. When you measure and then line up the saw to cut, line up the blade to the outside of your mark so when you cut, you don't shorten your length by the width of the blade. Now unless you have a second pair of hands, clamps are going to come in real handy to make sure that your 2 by 2s don't move as you screw them in place. It's not pretty, but then it doesn't have to be. It's on the inside where no one's going to see it once it's finished. It just needs to be strong and it will be. Now once the box is framed in with the 2x2s, it's time to score the 2x4 braces that'll hold the angled aluminum bars for the oven rack. I think it worked out to be something like three and a half inches between each bar. In this case, rather than putting the blade to the outside of the pencil mark, I centered the blade right on it and cut down an inch. That's how wide and deep the aluminum is. Now once that was done, I came back out and flipped the frame so I could drill holes and mount the casters for the oven. I bought four 3-inch polyurethane locking casters that are capable of supporting 250 pounds, which will be plenty of support for the oven, even with a torso or a full head mold inside, or both. It just so happens as I was building this, UPS arrived with my Dayton high temp blower from Granger, capable of moving 227 cubic feet of air per minute and my heating element and thermostat from McMaster Carr. The blower intake is five and a quarter inches and the exhaust port is three inches, the size of most drier exhaust hoses. So I set those items aside for later and mounted the scored two by fours for the rack. 
I wanted them to be high enough and away from where the heating element would be to prevent getting too much heat near a mold and still have a large hot box area where molds would rest. So once those were secured in place, I cut the angled aluminum to length and then dropped them into place to make sure they all fit. Once I know the aluminum rack's okay, it's time to start skinning the frame, starting with the back. Before getting too far into it, I position a couple of pieces of 2x4 that'll support the heating element and screw them into place. The heating element is 24 inches long and capable of 900 degrees Fahrenheit, but the thermostat only goes up to 250, so not to worry. When you build your version of this oven, you may decide to work in a different order than I have, but I chose to go ahead and put down the insulation on the floor of the oven before adding the plywood sides and top. The lighting's just better. I'm doing two inches of insulation, securing and sealing the top layer with foil tape. You can see now I've jumped ahead a bit in time and have the insulation finished on the back wall of the oven, and I'm taping it all down with foil tape. Next, I chose to go ahead and mount the heating element so that it would be one less thing to do later. Here it is finished with the ground terminated and the hot and neutral wires leading out and up to the thermostat. Foil tape seals and locks the aluminum rack in place, and then a strip of insulation is secured over the 2x4 holding the aluminum in place to prevent the 2x4 from absorbing any heat. In case the orientation of this image is a little bit confusing, the oven was laid over on its side to make placement of the insulation a little bit easier for me. Now with the oven upright again, the skinning can proceed. And then it's over on its side again to drill the intake hole for the blower. Once a hole was drilled, I used a jigsaw to cut out the larger hole. I did the same to create the mounting plate for the exhaust hose on the blower, which I made from a scrap of plywood. I also cut a 3-inch hole on the opposite side of the box, just above the heating element, so that the air will circulate through the box, creating an even temperature throughout the oven, essentially making it a convection oven. And here you can see the exhaust hose mounting plate attached to the blower on the outside of the oven. This is the interior showing the blower intake. There's only one layer of insulation at this point, but there will be two. Here's the finished interior showing the thermostat's temperature probe, which regulates the flow of electricity to the heating element via the thermostat, and a thermometer probe, which allows me to actually be able to monitor the temperature inside the oven and know the precise temperature. That's because the thermostat I purchased doesn't have a temperature readout. Now a strip of insulating foam for the front rack 2x4 and then it's onto its back to add front facing and the doors. I got kind of caught up in the construction so I don't have footage of me adding the insulation to the inside of the doors, but here it is on the finished oven. You can see that the insulation is the size of the door opening and that the doors overlap by almost 2 inches to ensure that there's no heat loss when the doors are closed and latched. The same goes for the bottom door that provides access to the heating element. And the door hinges are nothing fancy, just inexpensive utility hinges you can find just about anywhere. I shop at Home Depot a lot, to the point that if I'm not there at least three or four times a week, they call to see if I'm okay. Now it's the same with the door pulls, also nothing fancy. And the barrel bolts just ensure that the doors stay closed when I want them closed. Once the actual carpentry is completed, it's time to finish up the insulation work to make sure that the heat stays inside the oven. This is where the foil tape really comes into play. This is the hole for the heating element wiring. I'm using a foam carving wire to cut the insulation neatly once a hole is drilled in the plywood exterior. And here it is from the inside. This is the thermostat mounted to the exterior after being wired up along with the blower by my buddy Sean McNary. I have a healthy respect for electricity more like a fear of electricity, so Sean was nice enough to help me make sure that I wasn't accidentally going to incinerate myself by hooking things up incorrectly. Thanks, Sean. You can't see it in the video, but the thermostat has a pilot light to let you know when it's actually heating. The last thing to do is make it look good. I had some paint left over from some road cases I built a while back and thought that red would be a good color for an oven, but first a primer coat of white. Yeah, I know, it's just a foam latex oven, Todd. It doesn't have to look good. It does to me. I'm pretty anal. And here it is. Calibrated to within one degree and ready to go. I will most likely bake my foam at a lower temp, say 165-ish. 
So that'll leave me a bigger window and a margin of error. And I'll probably get a softer foam in the bargain. Now the hot box area where the molds go is essentially three feet by three feet by two feet. And now, voila, here's the new oven in its new home in the north annex of my shop. I hope this has all been helpful to you and let you know that the design is actually based off of a couple of different sources and I'd be happy to share links to images if you're interested. And if you'd like more information about my build, shoot me an email to tdebrosini at gmail or just hit me up on Facebook. See ya.